Let's talk identity politics. Because what's going to happen really quickly here is that Republicans are going to say, I don't care that she's black. I just don't like her policies. And you all are playing identity politics and only supporting her because she's black. But here's the truth is that white people have a luxury. They can take on and take off their identities as they please because of this thing called privilege. But for the most part, people of color and people who are part of marginalized groups don't have that same luxury. We are always our identity. And so for the most part, white people don't seem to understand why it matters that Kamala Harris is black or that Barack Obama was black or that Mayor Pete Buttigieg was gay. It matters because we have to be these identities at all times. So it's not identity politics as in just connecting point. It's that our identities are who we are at all times. It is how we are seen at all times. It is how we live in the world at all times. And we don't have the luxury of being able to be identityless or white. So it's not identity politics. The reality is it's representation and it matters. I'm not even sure if he fully understands what he said. But he's my stance on this whole thing in regards to what he said about your identity or being your identity. So I believe people are more than the color of their skin. Shocking, I know. For instance, by looking at this man, I see that he's black and that's about it. I don't know what he likes. I don't know what he watches on TV. I don't know what he does for past time. His race doesn't tell me any of that. Vice versa, you can't tell that I'm really into mixed martial arts by just looking at me. And this is why I believe you're more than the color of our skin. I promise you, if Martin Luther King was alive today, he would be cancelled because what he was on, what he preached, was totally opposed to what this philosopher is actually spewing. Here's what the United Nations had to say for International Men's Day. Happy International Men's Day to all the male allies around the world who support women. Defy gender roles, fight gender-based violence and stand up for equality. International Men's Day should be about men and the issues that men face in the same way how International Women's Day should be about women and the issues they face. But instead, this post was made to be all about women. It's International Men's Day. It should be all about men, yet somehow they made it all about women. Like, imagine the uproar if it was Women's Day and some massive organization made a post saying Happy International Women's Day to all the female allies around the world who support men, defy gender roles, and fight gender-based violence, and stand up for equality. In the next clip, Andrew just poops on this poor animal rights activist. I feel like these animal activists do not consider how many people these animals kill per year. You would think she's out here fighting for the rights of the alligator version of Gandhi or something. I don't want to talk about that. What, do you really like animals, miss? You do? Which ones is you, are your favorite? Every animal? That's sweet. Every single animal. They all have life. You're right. They don't all need to. I feel like you haven't experienced enough life or death situations with animals. Do you think an animal cares about your life? You think a polar bear is going, you know what? She's probably got backgammon on Tuesday. Maybe I won't eat her. I'm just going to sit here with this Coca-Cola and sip it with my nephews. Alright, we won't be adding any more commentary to the next clip. This man just did it better than I could. You respond to this person who was making a racial generalization. Racial generalizations are just stupid. Basically, what you're saying is everyone looks like this, acts the exact same way. People are individuals, not groups. <laughs> We're not offended, you're just wrong. You can't call us colonizers because we come from a country that has colonies. If my dad was locked up for burglary, would you call me a burglar? No, you wouldn't. Also, if you are going to call us colonizers, you need to look at the other empires that had colonies, for example, the Japanese Empire or the Ottoman Empire, which was one of the most brutal colonial powers to have ever existed. But would you call Turkish people colonizers or Japanese people colonizers? I don't think you would. I've never heard you do it. My ancestry is Swedish. Do you know how many colonies we had that lasted any decent amount of time? One. That's less than the Japanese empire had. Yet you'll call me a colonizer purely because of the color of my skin, but you wouldn't call a Japanese person a colonizer. Why? Because they're not white? Ridiculous. Ladies, did you know that you can legally pull the plug on someone who's brain dead even though their heart still beats? Because without a brain, you have no cognitive function or awareness of anything. But go off politicians on how heartbeat equals life so you can further oppress women. Yeah. Why the sound? Was that for comedic purpose? Totally worked. I've never laughed harder before in my life. The argument he's using to justify abortion all depends on if what is legal is moral. Because basically what he's saying is, well, because this is legal, 
and it's okay. Thus, this should be okay as well, which I have a few problems with. One, just because something is legal doesn't make it right or moral. I mean, look at the wonderful laws we had in the past. Totally legal. But the question is, was it moral? Was it good? Apartheid, South Africa, segregation, slavery in America. Legal, moral, good? Uh, I don't know, depends on who you're talking to. Also, the two things he's comparing isn't the exact same thing. The fetus has greater potential to have cognitive function than a person who suffered a serious head injury that led to this person being brain dead. So not exactly the same thing you're comparing, my guy. Grinder. So I will say that this app can be an incredible place for gay people to meet and interact. I have made so many friends off the app and I've had a lot of cool non-sexual and sexual experiences from it. But I will also say that this app can be an extremely toxic place to be. Um, we are teaching ourselves that it's okay to interact in person in the way that we interact on the app and that has got to go! Exhibit A, this one time I was messaging this guy whose profile picture was just his torso and I will say that his torso was immaculate. And after a while I asked for a face photo and he said, sure, but first I just want to make sure that it's okay that I'm Asian. The fact that white people are making non-white people feel it necessary to receive our approval before interacting with us is the problem. Dear other white people, if a non-white person came up to you at the club and was interested, would you ever say, no, I'm not interested because you're not white? If the answer is yes, we have a bigger problem. You're telling me out of all the humans on the entire planet, you have never and will never be interested in a non-white person. If the answer is yes, your taste is boring, check in on your racism. I don't understand why people try so hard to find race in every single situation. What I also don't understand with racial generalizations is that people for some reason ignore how stupid this whole concept is him out. So everyone who has this skin color thinks and feels the same way. Like how do you have the ability to make such a claim? Like do you know all white people? Are you all connected to the universe? Does this have something to do with chi? This is unfair to the people who don't act the way he claims all white people act. This is exactly like saying because one black person robbed a store, that would mean all black people rob stores, which is stupid. Guys, enjoy the video, leave a like and subscribe, check out my other stuff and I'll be have a good day. Peace out.